Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. And today what I'm doing is I'm making a dog paw using some fur that I've got left in a brush from brushing my golden retriever. And I'm doing this for a friend of mine, Terry, who asked me how to do it. So I said, I'll do a video on it and hopefully it'll be useful for everybody as well. I will put the link to everything that I use in the description and I'm not going to make it completely clear. I am going to have the poor little paw prints, different color, and they're going to be gold because, well, because she's a golden retriever. So I've got some gold mica powder and I'm just going to put a bit of the gold mica powder into the resin. Now the resin I'm using here for this is the Depoxy resin and this is the one I did the review on recently and it is really, really cheap. I've really enjoyed using it and as you'll see in my review, it's a great resin. So there we go. I've got that in there nicely now and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pet because I know how messy I am. And I'm going to fill up, but not all the way, these little paw prints. I will have the transparent resin over the top of this, the hair inside of that. Let it cure up before I turn it into a key ring. So what I'll do is I'll let that cure up now before I do the next stage. So before I do the next stage, I want to actually prep the hair. And how I do that is, especially if I'm using a brush, I just use a pair of tweezers here that I've got to get it out of the comb. And you may have a piece that you've already cut off your dog if you've got a long haired dog, or it might be a lot fluffier than this. Now, I want this to sit nicely in the mold. So what I'm going to do is I want it to be about that thickness there. And I will pop that in the mold, but it's going to be a lot more difficult to put this in the mold and, and keep it in one place without doing something to it first. So what I do is I get it to the kind of thickness that I want and the shape that I want, like so. And then the end, I just give a little bit of a twist to. I've done this with horse hair as well, where I've um, plaited it from someone's horse. And I take my UV resin, and what I'll do is I will pop a bit on there. What this will do is it will help keep that in place when I want to put it in. So I'll just cure that up, and there we go. So that's now nicely cured, and that's in a rough shape of what I want it. And as you can see, it's much easier to handle and it's less likely to come apart. And what you do is you can then mold this once it's in the resin to the shape that you want it. So what I'll do is I'll put this into a little bag so that I don't lose it or so it doesn't blow away. While the rest of that's curing, when it's that those pores have finished curing, what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll quickly show you how easy it is to pop that into the resin so that you can still see it and then turn it into a key ring. This has been curing now for about three hours, so it is actually cured enough to be able to do another pour on, but what it's not cured enough to do is to touch it. Now I've mixed up my resin and I've tried to mix it up with no bubbles in it and I've used the dipoxy resin that I mentioned before, and this is the hair. So what I do before I do anything else is I pop the hair. This is the one time that you don't mind hair in your resin. So I pop the hair into the resin. So it's got a nice covering of resin on it because that way I know that it's going to have very few bubbles in it and then what i'll do is i'll move this about until i get it into the position that i'm happy with it's not going to come apart because i have the resin already keeping it together and some people like it into being a wave and if you've got a dog with curly hair it's easy to do a wave where other people like it to be spread out and i'm going to spread this one out and also what I'm going to be doing is making sure I use my tweezers here to push this down so none of it is actually popping up. Now with light hair like this, what you will find is that it does go a little bit translucent, 
but actually you know the hairs there and they will still be able to see it and now tuck any hairs in i've got a couple of stray hairs here doing trying to be a nuisance and i can't be doing with that any longer so i'm going to cut them right off so they're fully in there that's now laying nice and flat in there and what i'm going to do now is just slowly pour up to the top in this but what i will be doing you see these hairs are disappearing quite quite a lot but with a dark haired dog this wouldn't happen obviously and now i'm going to pour that so that is now on there again i'm going to just pop those hairs down so now i'll leave that like that and what it will do it will flow slightly to the top and cause it to be poking through but that's not a problem because i will show you how i will finish it off completely once this is fully cured Okay, so this is cured now, which is great. So I'm just going to pop it out of the mould. It should pop out quite easily. Yep, there we go. You can see the hair on the back here, and you can see the hair through it. I'm going to dome this back bit. Now, you can dome it with a really dark colour. I, I don't tend to do that. But what I will do is I will dome it with a translucent colour, and that sometimes does help it to show up the blonder hair. So how I do uh, turn it into a key ring is I will drill a hole through the bottom here. Normally use the Dremel, but because this has been curing just 18 hours, this is still soft enough to screw this in without any problems at all. It won't crack. And what will happen is this will harden then around the thread of this little screw eye and it will have a really good embedding in there and it'll be nice and firm. And it's really simple to attach to with the key ring. You just need a, a jump ring like this, or a split ring. Pop that on there, like so. Close it up. And there we go. It's a finished key ring. Also add a little tassel to it if you would like. And I will be adding a tassel to it, but I want to add the tassel up here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this split ring here. Pop that on and then close that split ring up straight away. And then it's attached nicely to the key ring. I'm going to be doming the back using a translucent colour as well. So I'm ready now to put that on and dome that. I don't want it a thick dome. I just want it to be on there. And what this will do is it will help with those blonde hairs for them to show up a little bit because it's got a tiny bit of colour in. And also, I think it does finish off the look as well. Makes it nice and smooth and stops that concave bit being in there. So as you can see, those hairs now are starting to show up a little bit more. So there we go, I'm happy with that. So this is finished now. I'm really, really pleased with it. It's come out very, very well. And as you can see, the hair is showing in the back where I've domed it. And doming it does help magnify it a little bit. And I used a translucent yellow pigment for that. And it's worked really well. It's helped it show up a lot more. I love these. I think they're a great keepsake, especially for somebody that's lost a loved pet. And I love my pets. I'd be devastated if anything happened to them. So I hope this has inspired you to make some. I'm going to keep this one now. I really like it. I'm going to pop it on my keys and it will remind me of my little doggy Daisy every time I look at my keys. Enjoy your resonant. Please take care. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Join my Facebook group, How to Resin with Steve McDonald's. Great group. Very, very friendly. There's no nastiness in there. It's very supportive. And if you fancy becoming a Patreon, pop on the link below. There's several different benefits and tiers on that. And every little bit is really appreciated. It helps me to keep this channel going. Thank you very much. Take care. Enjoy your revising. Bye.